fact that the United There are two important reasons why the Commission of Inquiry for Cambodia decided to convene this special session today. First, is to highlight the fact that the United Nations Human Rights Committee is conducting an official review session on human rights in Cambodia on this same date. We recognize that major human rights abuses cannot be stopped by the action of just one international agency or group acting alone. A unified and coordinated international effort is required to put an end to the tyranny of dictatorship and repression. We wanted to highlight that reality and lay the groundwork for a more coordinated international effort to deal with the repression in Cambodia by linking the efforts of our commission with those of the UN Human Rights Committee in a very direct way. As part of that effort, the Commission of Inquiry has submitted to the UN Human Rights Committee an official statement, summarizing some of the key findings and recommendations that we have considered to date. Major elements of that statement will be read later in this session by Commissioner Paul Hoffman, along with a review of five recent developments in Cambodia that suggest that the campaign of repression being carried out by the Hun Sen government has become progressively worse, with an escalating pattern of impunity and disregard for democratic principles and for internationally accepted rule of law standards. Second, on January 27, 2022, the world celebrated Holocaust Memorial Day to commemorate the anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz death camp and the end of the Third Reich's Holocaust extermination of over six million people. This deserves special attention from this commission because we need to remember not just Auschwitz and the Holocaust, but also the sad reality that 2.2 million Khmer people similarly suffered from genocide at the hands of the Khmer Rouge regime in the 1970s, and that the Hun Sen government may have contributed to those atrocities. A number of its officials were high-level members of the Khmer Rouge regime. As important, Hun Sen himself, at a private meeting with the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in October of 2010, demanded the premature closing down of operations of the Khmer Rouge Tribunal, presumably to prevent the tribunal from investigating his colleagues' involvement in these international crimes. The Commission of Inquiry for Cambodia is convening this special session today with both of these realities in mind. We urge the UN Human Rights Committee and all other available international forums to give special and urgent attention to the major democracy, human rights, and rule of law violations taking place in Cambodia today, and especially to the most recent examples of these abuses that we are highlighting in our present statement. Our Commission of Inquiry will be doing the same by convening a full session and hearing on Cambodia's rule of law violations this coming June. We hope that these coordinated actions designed to bring concerted international attention to the severity of the Hun Sen government's abuses will help to create the groundswell of attention and support that will force effective and systemic change to take place in a way that has not been possible in the past. The Commission of Inquiry for Cambodia began its work and convened its opening session on October 23, 2021, a date chosen to coincide with the 30th anniversary of the Paris Peace Accords, which set out standards for democracy and human rights that the international community established as critical elements 
for the operation of the newly created Cambodian government. The commission was created to investigate and bring attention to the extensive and long-standing campaign of human rights and democracy abuses that the Hun Sen government has been engaging in as a way of remaining in power for over 37 years, and how it is in direct violation of the Paris Peace Accords and other international treaties and standards that the Accords embodied. That campaign of repression culminated in the lead-up to the 2018 national elections, and in the months and years that followed, with a determined effort to eliminate any form of meaningful political opposition, and any public or media actions indicating criticism of the Hun Sen regime and its policies and practices. As reviewed in the opening session of the Commission of Inquiry, the main political party was declared illegal and forced to cease its activities. Opposition political leaders were jailed, subjected to politically motivated criminal prosecutions, forced into exile, or otherwise silenced. Independent media outlets were closed or taken over by the government. Civil society groups and their members were harassed, threatened, or subjected to court proceedings that forced them to severely restrict their activities and go into hiding. Some of the best-known critics were killed or brutally beaten, like Kem Lai, Chia Vichia, and more recently, youth activist Sin Khan and members of Parliament, Kong Sopia and Nyoi Chemran. Increasingly, the Hun Sen government has taken these harshly repressive actions with impunity and without fear of punishment, because the international community, with a few notable exceptions, has not responded clearly and decisively to demand remedial action. One of the key points that was made at the opening session of the Commission of Inquiry was that meaningful and effective progress towards convincing the Hun Sen government to end its abuses and observe internationally accepted human rights, democracy, and rule of law standards was not likely to take place unless and until the international community mobilized the full spectrum of available international forums and pressure points as part of the reform effort. That is why the Commission of Inquiry came into being, to serve as a focal point for stimulating a more complete and coordinated international effort to bring attention to the problem and to encourage more effective remedial action and accountability Today's United Nations Official Compliance Review Session on Cambodia will bring a number of high-level Hun Sen government officials before the Human Rights Committee, where they will be called to account and forced to answer pointed questions about their abuses. In preparation for this review, the Human Rights Committee issued what they call a list of issues that spells out the specific violations of human rights standards that the government of Cambodia will be required to address, including those listed above that were identified at the opening session of our Commission of Inquiry, and in the formal statement to the Human Rights Committee that you will hear delivered in a few moments as a core element of this special session. These are important first steps in the process of seeking and obtaining meaningful accountability from the Hun Sen government. But that is only the beginning of the process. The goal of the Commission of Inquiry for Cambodia is to use our hearings throughout the course of 2022, along with the UN Human Rights Committee's Compliance Review Session today, as a springboard 
for activating and inspiring a wide range of additional international remedies and mechanisms to give greater attention to the violations by the Hun Sen government and to collectively demand effective and systemic remedies. Only by mobilizing a full range of available international forums, pressure points, and enforcement mechanisms can we expect meaningful change to take place. So today, with this special session, and with the UN Human Rights Committee's review session, we signal a new and more powerful effort to return internationally accepted human rights, democracy, and rule of law standards to Cambodia and to the Khmer people. Join with us in this effort by following and supporting the fact-finding efforts of the Commission of Inquiry and by demanding attention to the Hun Sen government's repressive policies and actions by all the relevant international forums, agencies, and pressure points responsible for monitoring compliance with international human rights and democracy standards worldwide. Starting us off in this process, and to open this special session of the Commission of Inquiry, please welcome Commissioner Louisa Cohn Griva and Commissioner Paul Hoffman, who will read the statement of the Commission of Inquiry to the UN Human Rights Committee and explain how it will serve as a starting point for mobilizing a broad international effort to bring Cambodia back into compliance with international human rights and democracy standards. One of the most urgent and critical questions that the Commission of Inquiry continuously receives from groups and from members of the Khmer community is this. How is the work of the Commission of Inquiry for Cambodia going to produce meaningful and effective change? Why will the Hun Sen government pay attention to your work and recommendations when they have so successfully ignored similar reports and statements issued by other highly respected international groups and agencies, including the United Nations? Why will the work of the Commission of Inquiry be different and how will it produce meaningful change and accountability? The Commission of Inquiry recognizes the task of ending the major human rights, democracy and rule of law violations that have been taking place in Cambodia for so long is not an easy one. There is no one single magic bullet that will remedy these long-standing violations. One single agency or initiative cannot produce meaningful and effective change by itself. Instead, the Commission sees its role as being a catalyst, helping to activate and mobilize the full range of available international monitoring forums and platforms to generate a more unified and forceful set of pressure points that can be brought to bear on the Cambodian government. By providing comprehensive and well-documented reviews of the abuse taking place, and by shining a more powerful spotlight on the problems that exist. By identifying very clearly the specific remedial actions that must take place, and by sending these messages to all the other international forums and platforms that work on these issues, we can make a difference. Instead of shining the light of just one candle on the abuses of the Hun Sen government that need attention, we will be working cooperatively and in unison with all the other international forums and mobilizing action from all the available tools in the human rights toolbox to produce so powerful a spotlight on the problems that they cannot be easily covered up or ignored. As a first step in that strategy to mobilize a larger body of unified international pressure, We've been working for the past several weeks to provide the United Nations Human Rights Committee, UNHRC, with a set of our interim findings and recommendations for use in its official review session of the Government of Cambodia's compliance under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, taking place this month in March 2022 at the UN headquarters in Geneva. We'll be making similar outreach efforts to other major international agencies and forums in the coming months to help organize and mobilize this type of broad-based, coordinated, worldwide effort 
that can make a meaningful difference and can produce effective change. You can get a clearer picture of what the Commission of Inquiry will be doing with other groups by taking a closer look at the statement we just submitted to the UN Human Rights Committee for the March Compliance Review Session. That statement will be read uh, in full shortly. And we have identified in that statement major issues and developments that need urgent attention and action from the Human Rights Committee. Uh, and we provided documentation on each of the major problems and cases. Uh, we also highlighted four of the most recent cases where major rule of law concerns were raised. Uh, first, the forceful and unlawful return of Cambodian refugees from Thailand at the specific request of the Hun Sen government. Second, the mass criminal trials now in progress against leaders and members of the opposition political party and the arrest January 2nd of the lead spokesperson for the defendants, Thierry Song. Thirdly, the extrajudicial execution of a leader of the youth movement, Sin Khan, with indications that the government was involved. And fourth, the forced closure of an environmental protection group called Mother Nature, under threat of arrest and criminal prosecution, of their six in-country staffers. The official statement also identifies specific remedial actions that need United Nations endorsement as part of its review process. And one of the avenues that will be receiving our considerable attention uh, will be on the economic front. So the economic pressure points have been underutilized in the past. The one exception was the recent decision by the EU to deny Cambodia continu continued trade benefits uh, under the preferential tariff system under the name Everything But Arms. Now, this was a major step forward, linking trade privileges to concerns about Cambodia's human rights abuses. It's a model that deserves to be strengthened and broadened with all of Cambodia's major trade partners uh, regarding tourism and with regard to consumers' treatment of Cambodian products. So the Commission plans to link these economic pressure points with other approaches, just as it has with the committee for the review session, the Human Rights Committee's review session in Cambodia this March. Money talks, and so our commission recognizes that economic pressure points need to play a major role in helping change the rule of law, human rights, and democracy picture in Cambodia. So in addition to the UN Human Rights Committee uh, and the economic initiatives mentioned just now, the Commission of Inquiry will be making um, several attempts over the coming months these steps. First, working more closely with the United Nations team of special rapporteurs and experts, independent experts, including the newly named Special Rapporteur for Human Rights in Cambodia. This is a major initiative to have a Special Rapporteur. We expect to be working very closely to encourage the Special Rapporteur to play a very active role in investigating abuses and demanding action. Secondly, we'll be re reaching out directly with foreign governments, especially the principal trade partners of Cambodia, to promote a broad effort, in sync, diplomatic effort among powers, these powers, for both economic and political pressure. Thirdly, we'll be giving special and urgent attention to these four most recent and flagrant situations of gross abuses just happening within the last several months. Uh, the forced refoulement of Cambodian refugees, the mass criminal show trials. So compliance with rule of law standards cannot be claimed just because the courts and the law enforcement process in a particular country are invoked when carrying out politically motivated repression. This is not rule of law at all. So it's vital that the courts of Cambodia be called out and we continue to stand up for the principle that these courts must operate on an independent and impartial basis and not as instruments of the government's will. So our commission's next regular session uh, will be in June. We will be focusing on these rule of law concerns and will feature a comprehensive analysis of Cambodia's rule of law violations by the International Commission of Jurists. Uh, this group, the International Commission of Jurists has done tremendous work in documentation and will be featuring their findings.
due to Commissioner Paul Hoffman's unavailability for this session. His statement will be read by Commissioner Louisa Griva. Over many years, working on cases and issues involving major human rights abuses taking place throughout the world, there are a number of important lessons that I have learned. One of the most important is the sad reality that highly autocratic and repressive regimes do not change their ways easily. A media report bringing attention to an abuse, a critical report or statement by a United Nations agency or official, even photographic or video evidence confirming a horrendous violation, none of these things by themselves is enough to convince a major human rights abuser that they need to change their ways. Instead, as Amnesty International's highly successful approach makes clear, there has to be a major, highly coordinated effort by the international community using a wide variety of platforms and pressure points to shine a powerful spotlight on the abuses and to convince a perpetrator that they will suffer serious consequences if they do not cease and desist. What has to take place is a full range of economic, diplomatic, legal, and public pressure that will demonstrate that major abuses will not be allowed to take place with impunity. That violators will be held accountable in meaningful ways before the court of international public opinion and powerful diplomatic and economic channels. That is the only way to get major human rights abusers to change their ways. This is what the Commission of Inquiry for Cambodia is trying to achieve with the situation in Cambodia. To build upon and to bring together in a more coordinated and effective way, the various agencies and pressure points that have spoken out against the widespread human rights and democracy abuses of the Hun Sen regime. The objective is to generate and mobilize a higher level of international attention and condemnation that cannot be ignored. That is why the commission decided to convene this special session concurrent with a compliance review session on Cambodia that the United Nations Human Rights Committee is holding today in Geneva. At the sessions in Geneva, many of the highest level officials of the Hun Sen government will be called to account for the government's arrests, criminal prosecution, and even physical beatings and killings of anyone daring to organize political opposition or simply to publicly criticize the government's policies and actions. We need to begin a comprehensive process of speaking truth to power and demanding an end to long-standing human rights and democracy abuses in a loud and clear voice, backed up by all the available international pressure points. Now, our Commission of Inquiry's official statement to the UN Human Rights Committee, delivered just before the start of its March 3rd and 4th compliance review hearing on Cambodia, made several things clear. First, Substantial and long-standing human rights and democracy abuses have been taking place on a widespread basis in Cambodia, preventing opposition and criticism and keeping the Hun Sen government in power on an uncontested basis. Second, that meaningful and effective changes in these highly repressive policies would not be possible unless substantial remedial actions are taken. Today, in my statement, I will review and highlight the findings and recommendations that the Commission of Inquiry has presented to the UN Human Rights Committee. These are our interim findings and recommendations at this early stage of our efforts. We will be using these points to encourage and stimulate action by other available forums and pressure points in the international community, following on from today's compliance review session in Geneva. As our statement to the United Nations indicated, at the top of the list of abuses needing foremost attention and action is the decision of the Hun Sen government carried out over a number of years to eliminate the main political opposition party and specifically in the run up to the 2018 national elections. The government had the courts declare this party illegal, arrested and subjected to criminal charges, many of the party's leaders and spokespersons on charges of, quote, inciting social unrest and treason, unquote. 
a mass trial is currently taking place of these leaders who have done no more than peacefully exercise freedom of expression and freedom of assembly. Politically motivated prosecutions like these are in direct violation of the democracy and human rights standards that the Hun Sen government specifically agreed to abide by when it signed the Paris Peace Accords in 1991, establishing the basic framework for the operation of the government of Cambodia. Indeed, the government has carried out a series of repressive actions to restrict and punish the exercise of numerous internationally recognized human rights protections, including the freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, and the freedom of association. Critical public voices have been silenced by arrests, prosecutions, and vicious physical assaults, even assassinations. Independent media outlets like the Cambodia Daily, the Phnom Penh Post, Voice of America, and Radio Free Asia have been forced to close or were restri severely restricted in their coverage or have had to leave the country. Restrictions and intensive monitoring have been imposed on major community groups and activities. The courts and the law enforcement system have been misused to punish and harass anyone daring to violate or criticize the government imposed restrictions. The environmental protection group Mother Nature uh, and its activist supporters have been especially targeted, along with critical voices representing women, youth, and workers. They have been subjected to an intensive campaign of monitoring, intimidation, arrests, and beatings, all designed to silence their voices and to prevent public criticism of the government and its policies. As we reported to the UN Human Rights Committee, there have been a number of recent developments that highlight in highly dramatic terms the intensive and horrific nature of the abuses that have been taking place and that deserve intensive action. First, at the most re recent hearing held in the mass criminal trial of political opposition leaders and critics on uh, November 6, 2021, the court rejected protests by many of the defendants that their basic due process rights were being violated because of inadequate notice of the charges against them, unlawful changes in the makeup of the, of the judicial panel, and restrictions imposed on who could attend the hearing, thus violating their right to a public trial. The court simply dismissed these objections out of hand by saying there is nothing to worry about. Second, on November 9th, 2021, Thai immigration officials at the direct request of the Hun Sen government arbitrarily and unlawfully returned or refouled three Cambodian refugees to Cambodia, despite their having been designated as meeting refugee requirements by the UN Refugee Office. This forced return was in direct violation of the non refoulement standards embodied in international law. The three were immediately arrested and subjected to criminal prosecution as soon as they were returned to Cambodia forcibly, further confirming that they were indeed fleeing to avoid persecution, as the UN had acknowledged. These three refugees were not the only ones that had been subjected to unlawful forced return from Thailand. Many others have been subjected to similar treatment in the past, pursuant to an agreement between the Thai and Cambodian governments to ignore international standards and return refugees to the country that they had fled. Third, Youth activist Sin Khan was hacked to death on the street. This happened on November 22nd, 2021, just days after Prime Minister Hun Sen warned the public that they would be punished if they protested his appointment as chair of an upcoming ASEAN head of state meeting soon to take place in Cambodia. Sin Khan had re been repeatedly targeted in the past for attacks for his public criticism. His horrific violent killing was just the latest example of how the government uses brutal attacks as a means of intimidating the public and punishing critics. There's a long line of similar cases, starting with the grenade attacks on an opposition political rally in 1997, the assassinations of Kem Le and Chia Vichia, and the brutal beatings of two members of parliament, Kong Sopia and Nai Chemran. 
Independent investigators, including the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, found evidence that government agents, including members of Hun Sen's own personal bodyguard unit, had played a major role in these attacks. The fourth case in point is the treatment of the environmental protection group Mother Nature. It was forced to close its Cambodia office the first week of this year in January 2022. All six of its in-country staffers were arrested, along with dozens of supporters, for protesting government plans to develop public areas and privately held properties, including Phnom Penh's largest lake area for commercial benefit, forcing many families from their ancestral lands without proper compensation. And fifth, plans have just been announced to intensify efforts to subject internet and social media users to monitoring and surveillance and arresting those who post statements critical of the government. A new law has been proposed that will establish on February 16th, a Cambodian national internet gateway system, similar to China's Great Firewall internet monitoring system. The new system will allow the government to closely monitor online content, close down access to, quote, objectionable sites and postings, close quote, and punish those expressing views on social media that the government does not like. Cambodian authorities defend this plan as, quote, essential for peace and security, close quote, claiming that people are encouraged to use the internet, but it is clear that this freedom has a limit and that, quote, it may not be used for inciting social unrest, close quote. This is the statement of government spokesperson Pai Sapan, quoted in the New York Times on January 15th. Ki Sukon, a 23-year-old artist and rapper, along with approximately 30 others, have already been arrested and imprisoned for their social media postings since 2020 according to the New York Times. They include a 16-year-old, Gak Sovan Chai, for comments he made in a chat group on Telegram, as well as a former agriculture professor who made jokes on Facebook about requiring chickens to wear anti-COVID masks as part of a critical comment about the government's handling of the pandemic. Those who've already been punished include three journalists who are arrested and charged in January this year with, quote, inciting social unrest, close quote, for posting a news article dealing with a land dispute problem. Many more arrests and restrictions are expected to follow under the new decree. Taken together, these new developments paint a bleak and very disturbing picture of how the Hun Sen government is using a variety of harshly repressive tactics to prevent and punish any form of public criticism and how it is misusing the courts and the legal system to prohibit the exercise of internationally protected rights. And further, to mask these major abuses behind the semblance of a legal process. Asked to explain why he thought he was arrested for posting his songs on Facebook, the rapper Ki Sukun explained, the government made an example of me to scare people who talk about social issues. The government's goal is to suppress any form of dissent, opposition, or criticism by designating such comments as, quote, unlawful or, quote, criminal in nature because they may encourage or incite, quote, social unrest. The time for remedial action is now. We are approaching a very critical time for Cambodia. Local elections will be taking place this year and national elections in 2023. Unless the international community takes some form of action now to encourage and produce change, nothing will prevent the Hun Sen government from further solidifying its 37 year reign by eliminating any semblance of a democratic system and by further entrenching its policies of repression of civil society and the exercise 
of internationally protected rights by the Khmer people. What remedial actions are needed to return Cambodia to a reasonable level of compliance with international democracy, human rights, and rule of law standards? Our commission's submission to the UN Human Rights Committee set out a few of the essential remedial steps that must be taken. First and most important, we have made it clear the partial release of a small number of political prisoners which took place in November of 2021 is far from enough. They remain subjected to severe restrictions on their activities and face potential further prosecution at the discretion of government officials. All political prisoners and prisoners of conscience, not just a small sample must be released. And the misuse of the courts and the criminal process to prevent and punish the exercise of free speech and free association must stop. The misuse of the courts and the determination of the government to hide behind a judicial process that in fact is not independent, but rather controlled for politically motivated purposes, does not convert harshly repressive policies and actions into a lawful system of justice. Second, the second remedial action must be that media outlets, including social media commentators, must be allowed to operate in an open, independent, and unrestricted basis. The outlets that were closed or taken over must be returned to their former independent status. Third, suppression of meaningful political opposition must end. The major opposition political party must be returned to a situation where it is recognized as legal and able to operate without government imposed restrictions or controls. Leaders and members of the political opposition must be allowed to speak their views and to conduct their activities without being subjected to criminal prosecution, arrest, or brutal beatings. And fourth, civil society groups like Mother Nature and trade unions must be allowed to operate and to express their views without restriction and without being subjected to criminal charges simply for exercising their freedom of speech and freedom of association rights, however embarrassing their positions may be to the government. Unless these core remedial steps are taken so that the political opposition can once again operate effectively and members of the public can freely express their views without fear of reprisals, the results of the upcoming elections do not deserve to be recognized as valid and legitimate by the international community. And a wide variety of diplomatic and economic sanctions should be imposed. These sanctions should include restrictions on trade with Cambodian companies, building on the trade limitations that the European Union recently imposed. They should also include an organized effort to reduce tourism in order not to reward the government while it is conducting severe violations and a consumer's boycott of Cambodian goods. Efforts should also include a wide variety of sanctions imposed by foreign governments. That could include refusal to grant visas to visiting officials, freezing of assets, and refusal to grant diplomatic recognition. We hope that the United Nations Human Rights Committee and all international agencies and entities having dealings with the government of Cambodia will give serious consideration to the steps that they can take, indeed must take, to make clear that the increasingly serious democracy, human rights, and rule of law abuses of the Hun Sen government will not be tolerated. For our part, the Commission of Inquiry from Cambodia We'll continue our work in the coming months by giving attention to some of the most serious violations of international law. Our upcoming June session will be devoted to rule of law issues. We've invited Kingsley Abbott of the International Commission of Jurists to provide keynote expert testimony. At our September session, we've invited Brad Adams of Human Rights Watch to provide a comprehensive historical review of the major abuses that have been taking place. 
throughout this year, we are doing as we are doing today with the UN Human Rights Committee to maximize the pressures that can be brought to bear to move Cambodia in the direction of more effective compliance with international democracy and human rights standards. Join with us in this important effort. Thank you. One of the critical questions that frequently is asked about the work of the Commission of Inquiry for Cambodia is how the Khmer community is involved in the process and how they can contribute to the results that we are seeking. Perhaps the best example of the positive impact the Commission has had on the Khmer community and how they have become involved and responded in a meaningful way is the initiative that Selah Nyin has taken to organize a Khmer Urgent Action Case Alert System along the lines of the community-based letter-writing campaign that Amnesty International uses as the basis for its highly successful and highly motivational Urgent Action Network that is designed to speak truth to power. With us at today's hearing to explain her effort and how it provides an important new way for the Khmer community to organize, to become active, and to express its views and concerns in relation to the work of the Commission of Inquiry, is the developer and leader of the Khmer Urgent Action Network, Sela Nian. Today, March 4th, we launch the Truth to Power Community Campaign. This coincides with the Commission's special session highlighting the most recent appalling violations requiring immediate action along with the UN Human Rights Committee meeting, where Cambodia will be under compliance review. Inspired by the work of the Commission of Inquiry for Cambodia to bring international attention to major human rights and democracy abuses by the Hun Sen government, the Khmer community has decided to organize a new way to mobilize action on the most serious cases. The community has set in motion a new urgent action case alert system. This urgent action case alert system will make it possible for community members to write letters of concern and protest to the highest level of the Hun Sen government officials regarding cases requiring immediate attention and action. This Khmer community campaign builds on the urgent action case alert model used by Amnesty International, but expands on Amnesty's approach in two important ways. First, case alerts will not be limited to situations of arbitrary imprisonments of prisoners of conscience. The Khmer community's version will cover all major situations of abuse. For example, the assassination of youth leader Sin Khan just a few weeks ago deserves attention and action. The mass criminal trials of the political opposition leaders and critics of the government also deserves attention and action, even if some of the accused and targeted defendants are not yet in jail. Second, major problems that involve more general types of highly abusive policies also deserve urgent action treatment. For example, the newly proposed government decree that would impose a system of government monitoring and control on the use of the internet, including social media communications, similar to the Great Firewall of China, requires urgent attention and action even before individual internet users are arrested and prosecuted under the new law. Letter writing may not seem like a powerful tool to oppose tyrannical regimes, but the amnesty model has shown that mobilizing strong community grassroots involvement and protests can indeed have a major impact on convincing abusive governments to alter their policies. Shining a powerful spotlight on major abuses can be a very powerful method. Four, Speaking truth to power and convincing abusers and the international community will demand accountability and an end to impunity. The Truth to Power community campaign involves the Cambodia Acts Now letter writing initiative, the urgent action alert system, and an advocacy toolkit with a downloadable electronic version that is available today. I would like to close with a poem by the Khmer community. 
the voices of the Cambodian people unite, echoing in unison to the world, speaking truth to power, demanding for a free and just society, reclaiming the kingdom back to the people. Kim Som Chun Kam Nap Khlai Mui, Lai Rip Cham Lang Doi Sa Hak Kum Khmer, Sam Rai Kun Khmer, Run Tu Loka Pinh Nhat Smar Day, Chu Yerok Yut Te Tho Doi Ma Cha Tuk Day, Am Nai Doi Day Kam Puchi Am Ta. We believe that this community campaign will inspire and empower our communities towards meaningful change for a brighter Cambodia through unity. We look forward to having you join us in this effort. Thank you for participating in this special session of the Commission of Inquiry for Cambodia. Please join us for our next regular session in June, dealing with rule of law issues and the principles of impunity and accountability. It will feature a comprehensive analysis of the Hun Sen government's violations of rule of law standards presented by Kingsley Abbott of the International Commission of Jurists, who has a unique personal knowledge and extensive in-country experience dealing with these issues. The June session also will provide a more detailed examination of the most recent developments taking place in Cambodia that demonstrate the government's refusal to abide by rule of law principles and its misuse of the courts to falsely claim legal support for its violations. These include the assassination of Sin Khan the mass criminal trials of political opposition leaders and supporters, the refoulement of Cambodian refugees from Thailand, the forced closing of the Mother Nature Environmental Protection Group, and new decrees to monitor and punish social media postings and other internet uses along the lines of the Great Firewall of China. It will also feature an analysis of the actions taken by Hun Sen in October of 2010 to prematurely close down the operations of the Khmer Rouge Tribunal and end its efforts to investigate the role that several of his associates, including his Minister of Foreign Affairs, may have played in the Khmer Rouge genocide. Hun Sen's actions to stop the efforts of the Khmer Rouge Tribunal to obtain some degree of accountability for the Killing Fields genocide is one of the most powerful examples of his government's refusal to adhere to the internationally recognized rule of law standards. Additional sessions of the Commission of Inquiry in the coming months will focus on other major democracy and human rights abuses that require international attention and action.